ഇപ്പോൾ നമ്മളോട് വചനം സംസാരിക്കും ധീരജ വെൽക്കം യു ബിഹാഫ് ഓഫ് സെന്റ് മേരീസ് ചർച്ച് സെന്റ് ഫ്രാൻസിസ്കോ പ്ലീസ് താങ്ക് യു താങ്ക് യു ഫോർ ബീങ് വിത്ത് ആസ് താങ്ക് യു ഫോർ യുവർ ഹെൽപ്പ് ആൻഡ് യുവർ സപ്പോർട്ട് ആൻഡ് താങ്ക് യു ഫോർ അക്സെപ്റ്റിംഗ് അവർ ഇൻവിറ്റേഷൻ ഫോർ ദിസ് ഡേ ടു കം ആൻഡ് സേ ദ ഗോഡ്സ് വേൾഡ് വിത്ത് ആസ് താങ്ക് യു അച്ഛാ പ്ലീസ് Thank you. Thank you so much, Acha. Thank you always for thinking of us and uh, it's such a pleasure again to be with our St. Mary's Church especially uh in this Etnoimba season. Uh again on a Friday night it's uh, wonderful to see so many people even though we are shut in for the COVID situation. Still Friday night many people do so many things. Uh I'm so happy we can spend a few moments together. Uh again as you Sorry, Yes. I request all of you to join with video so I can can see you if it's possible. So if you click on the link you can uh, on your video. Sorry Acha sorry for the interruption. Ah that's okay no thank you thank you again. And again as uh, all of you know uh, Sajee Achan uh, was uh, our vicar here and uh, he has brought us up to a good level and uh, by God's grace uh, we are continuing here with your support and with all your prayers. So it's wonderful again to be with you. Uh, I have a few things prepared uh, so let me go ahead and just delve into it. First of course let's glorify our Lord. Uh, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Living Holy Spirit, one true God. Amen. Dearly beloved, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Again, just uh, addressing you, uh, respected Saji Korachan, and our beloved members there at our St. Mary's uh, Church in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, I really, again, welcome this opportunity uh, to spend 15 minutes with you, and I do promise I'll try to live in it to just 15 minutes. Um, I must confess, though, just to start off that uh growing up and not being part of a parish that was named uh under uh the patronage of mother mary uh, our family uh just did not really focus upon this important uh fasting season uh because uh it was an optional season we uh, have focused on the canonical fast that occurs in august uh but we never really did too much uh during this time but by god's grace slowly but surely we are seeing the wonder and the importance of this particular time and i'll tell you a little something about that a little good news here toward the end of my message um in this pandemic time many of us have attempted to redeem our time from idleness because we find ourselves with extra time by increasing prayer and bible study and again commending you all for spending the friday night with us many of course however uh do waste the time and i am reading more and more articles and seeing more and more headlines of increases in depression in anxiety and even in divorce during this time we really need to explore and better understand who we are as a people and as a family and as individuals and where we stand with our creator this will give us the mental power to overcome any situation including the present one even though it begins to grate on us with all the lockdowns and all the difficulties we have in conducting our daily life now here we come to mother mary mother mary shows us our identity as part of the faithful church yeah that's right when we honor mary and this is what some uh, people who call themselves christians don't really understand but when we honor mary we are first honoring our lord first and foremost but we are also getting a glimpse of ourselves as we can and should be we are getting a glimpse of ourselves as we can and we should be in this her birthday season let's take a look at how mary is foretold and portrayed in both the old and new testament yes she is actually foretold in the old testament by doing so we will get a look at ourselves as well and again we can begin to reinforce our own identity now i've always been fascinated by this concept of typology but and also by the various poetic uh, poetic styles and types our church fathers have given us concerning our holy virgin mother mary so let's start with a song now uh i have tried to practice my malayalam just a little bit most of you know i'm handicapped in that area but let's go ahead and try to sing one of our songs in the tashmashto uh uh service to the blessed virgin mary let me uh with uh, achan's permission i'll try to do this 
akila jagal padiye nayaga naye digoshi cha gad bahumani chu mariyam walu dam padamaidan morio rahe melai nuadaren thank you again thank you for bearing with my poor pronunciation but uh, this song uh likens Mary in the English translation it likens Mary to a ship and that ship of course is the ark that Noah built and Mary carrying Jesus through the waves and troubles and tribulations is like the ark that Noah built to carry uh, the human family uh, through the tribulation of the flood and so like this there are many many types of what what is known as typologies in uh, the scriptures let's just take a a moment to look at one of our prayers this is this prayer is from the shimo namaskaram it's from uh, rum show of saturday rum show of saturday so actually saturday evening's prayer and we are in saturday evening according to the church calendar bear with me just a moment there's some beautiful beautiful poetry here let me just quickly read it to you in english moses likened you to the bush and david your father to the ark gideon figured you by the fleece and jacob the just by the latter by which the race of man has been raised up to heaven moses the prophet saw on the mountain of fire which rested on a bush and the bush was not burned by it it was a figure of the virgin mary in whom the son of god dwelt and she was not burned by his flame jacob represented you by the latter which he saw in bethel while he slept and he called it the house of god in truth you were the dwelling place of god who descended and rested in your womb according to his pleasure to you belongs the praise o god barakumor so again we see here several different types that are attributed to mother mary as the um, church father is writing this poem let's uh, again just very quickly uh, the prayer likens mother mary to the burning bush we find in exodus chapter 3 the fire is on the bush but the bush is not burned god's fire the holy spirit is on mary but mary is not burned so mary is like the mountain mary is like the bush and is able to carry the lord uh, within her now the story of gideon is found in judges chapter 6 verses uh, 36 through 40 uh shares the story of the fleece how gideon is called into service gideon was a mighty man he was a warrior but uh he of course had to be initiated into that role and god performed a miracle uh to give gideon a sign that sign was gideon had asked god okay if you are really calling me if you're calling me make this fleece of wool wet with dew overnight and leave the ground dry And so Gideon woke up and he took the fleece that he had put out on the bare ground and he wrung the fleece into a bowl and lots and lots of water came out. And so that was a sign. That was a sign that God's presence was with Gideon. Again, that water is representing the Lord who is in the fleece of Mother Mary and the church father is mentioning that. Now let us go to Jacob's ladder. Jacob's ladder is a famous story. Jacob's dream of a ladder ascending or a stairway ascending into heaven and the angels coming up and down at that that's in genesis chapter 28 and that demonstrated the connection between heaven and earth god and man and god's blessing descending upon jacob god telling jacob he is going to be the owner and his descendants are going to be owner of the land that he's sleeping upon there in the area of bethel again mother mary is get receiving the blessing and producing the blessing for all of humanity so that humanity may enter the heavenly land so that humanity may possess the heavenly realm so again these are types now these are these are examples of typology so let's go now to the main type that i would like to focus on that's david and the ark of the covenant david and the ark of the covenant again that's uh, mentioned here in uh this particular prayer this rumsho prayer this evening prayer for saturday there is actually quite a wonderful write up on a catholic answers website and i'll share extensively from that because it gives a good amount of detail and helps us to compare and con- contrast uh what we're focusing upon here so the payoff point 
the payoff point is that we can see ourselves as giving birth to the living God and God's purpose. And we'll come to that. I just want to build up uh, to that point. So first, let's talk, as we are introducing this concept of David and the Ark of the Covenant, and Mary being the Ark, let's, uh, let's just first mention the Shekinah glory of the Holy Spirit. The Shekinah glory of the Holy Spirit. When uh, the people of God were traveling in um, uh, the desert and also before they had the temple in the land of Israel, they uh, were under the guidance of uh, spiritual shepherds. They were under the guidance of King David. They were under the guidance of judges. And God had instructed Moses uh, to build a tabernacle surrounded by heavy curtains when the Ark of the Covenant was created. Within the tabernacle, he was to place an ark made of uh, acacia wood covered with gold inside and out. Within the Ark of the Covenant was placed a golden jar holding the manna, Aaron's rod that budded, and the stone tablets of the covenant. So three things, three things were placed in the Ark. Now, again, when the Ark was completed initially, there in the time of Moses and Aaron, uh, this glory of the Lord covered the tent where the Ark was placed. And it filled the tabernacle. And the verb there for cover or to overshadow and the metaphor of a cloud are used in the Bible to represent the presence and glory of God. So quickly, going to Mother Mary, we are uh, told in the story of the Annunciation where Abor Angel Gabriel is uh, talking to Mother Mary and Mother Mary is contemplating what is it, the message that is being received. Uh, the angel Gabriel says, the glory of the Lord, the power of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord will overshadow you. Again, similarly to the shadowing, overshadowing of the Ark of the Covenant in the tabernacle in the time of Moses and Aaron. So that gives us the first hint. And if one is reading in Luke's gospel where Mother Mary's story is related, where the angel Gabriel is giving uh, the message to Mother Mary, the Annunciation, if one is reading that as a Jewish reader, one immediately sees that parallel. So it's really very important. It's so important to understand the Jewish root and the Jewish history and uh, the, the cultural and family identity of who Mary was and what she is representing with respect to the history of the faith. So, and again, it's very insightful, very insightful for us. Now, uh, let's move uh, slightly further. Uh, and talk about the ark. And then we will also have a just a brief mention of John the Apostle in the book of Revelation, also enhancing this notion of this typology and giving us a glimpse of who Mary is. So let's uh, talk a little bit about Mary visiting Elizabeth. Mary visiting her older cousin Elizabeth, who was with child with John the Baptist. Again, uh, there are parallels here between King David and the Ark, King David and the Ark, and Elizabeth, and uh, the, the, this visitation of Mary to Elizabeth. After Moses died, Joshua led the Israelites across the Jordan River into the Promised Land. Joshua established the Ark of the Covenant in Shiloh, where it stayed for more than 200 years. One day, the Israelites were losing a battle with the Philistines, so they snatched the ark and rushed it to the front lines, thinking, of course, that the ark would protect them. The Philistines, however, in this instance, captured the ark, but it caused them great problems. The Philistines had great problems in holding the ark, and all of this is re related in 1 Samuel chapter 5 and also in chapter 6. Now, David, after some time, went out to retrieve the ark, and again, this is 1 Samuel chapter 6. A man uh, attempted to uh, touch the ark in order to uh, stabilize it. Uh, that his name was Uzzah, and he died immediately. And so David was afraid and said, How can the ark of the Lord come to me? How can the ark of the Lord come to me? So he left the ark in the hill country of Judea for three months. Uh, we are also told later on, as David is uh, retrieving the ark, that he danced and he leapt for joy in front of the ark. And everyone around the ark at that time shouted for joy. And the ark resided for this long period of time 
in a particular house, the house of one fellow named Obed Edom, Obed Edom. And for the months that the ark was in Obed Edom's house, that house was particularly blessed. And after the time, the season the ark was in this house of Obed Edom, David took the ark and he brought it to Jerusalem. And he wanted to hold it in Jerusalem until the temple was built. Now, here, compare David's uh, interaction with the Ark of the Covenant of wood with the stone tablets inside to Luke's account of the visitation of uh, Mary to Elizabeth. So again, we're reading from Luke chapter 1. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a city of Judah, and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. We know this story, right? And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. We know that John was alive and his spirit was alive. And he leaped in the womb when he heard Mary. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And why is it this granted me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the voice of your greeting came to my ear, the babe in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. Blessed are you, Mary. Blessed are you. Blessed are you. Again, this is in Luke chapter 1. So let's see some of these parallels. Let's just quickly examine them. So Mary arose and went to the hill country of Judea. The Ark of the Covenant resided in the hill country of Judea for three months. Mary was in Elizabeth's home three months. Now, apparently, people who go to where Elizabeth's home was uh, can just easily and very quickly walk to a place called Ein Karem, Ein Karem, and Abu Ghosh, Abu Ghosh. Abu Ghosh is where the Ark resided, and Ein Karem in Israel is where Elizabeth lived. Again, these were very much the same place. The idea is, the parallel is there between David and uh, going to the place of the ark and Mary going to the place of Elizabeth for refuge and blessing. So when David saw the ark, he rejoiced and said, how can the ark of the Lord come to me? And what does Elizabeth say? Elizabeth uses very, very similar language. Why is it granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Again, Luke is telling us something. There's a parallel between these two uh, uh, episodes, these two uh, uh, things, you know, one Old Testament, one New Testament. So when David approached the ark, he shouted and he danced and he leapt in front of the ark. He was wearing an ephod at the time. And that is actually the clothing of a priest. So we have all said that David kind of, sort of, he merged uh, the priestly ministry with the prophetic ministry. And again, being a type of Christ. So now John the Baptist he leapt in his mother Elizabeth's womb. John the Baptist, of course, was from the priestly line of Aaron. Again, David wearing the ephod of the priest. John the Baptist leaping, dancing, when the ark, the physical ark, the fleshly ark, Mary, is coming. So, again, the ark of the old covenant remained in the house of obed Edom for three months, and Mary remained in the house of Elizabeth for three months. So, again, so much blessing. Elizabeth uses the term I, blessed, you are blessed, you are blessed. And of course, if the blessed person is in our home, we too will be blessed just like in the Old Testament, Obed Edom uh, mentioned and, uh, excuse me, uh, experienced. And again, finally, finally, in this parallelism, the ark returns to its home and ends up in Jerusalem. David retrieves the ark and then eventually takes it to Jerusalem, where God's presence and glory is eventually revealed in the temple after Solomon builds it. Now Mary returns uh, home, and uh, of course she goes to Bethlehem to give birth, but then eight days later, she makes it to Jerusalem to present Jesus in the temple. So again, I'm sharing with you all these details to establish for you that God had in mind when the ark and the blessing of the ark was created, that a person would carry not the stone tablets of written word, law, but the fleshly embodiment of the law that is Jesus Christ himself, and he would be carried in a vessel, and that vessel was Mother Mary. Now, let's quickly just turn to another example of this. It's a Marian example, and involves the 
Apostle John. And this is a New Testament example, of course. Uh, John uh, wrote the book of Revelation. That's what tradition says. We don't quote so much from the book of Revelation in our particular, in our church, uh, yet we do use it for study. And of course, we accept it as canonical. In John chapter 11, uh, excuse me, pardon me, in Revelation chapter 11, John is sharing that God's temple in heaven was opened and the ark of his covenant was seen within his temple. See, for 600 years, the temple had not, excuse me, the ark, the ark of the covenant, the physical ark with the law in it, had not been seen because it had been lost. And John is given a vision that that ark is in the temple in heaven. And his vision is that the temple was opened and John sees the ark. Now, immediately as we move into chapter 12, that vision of that ark that John sees turns into the vision of a woman. He says, he writes, And a great portent appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with a moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child. This is Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. The woman, of course, is Mother Mary. The ark of the covenant revealed by God to John. She is the new ark. She was seen bearing the child who would rule the world with a rod of iron, the king, the one with the scepter. Mary was seen as the ark and as the queen. Now, okay, so I've built all this up. I built all this up. I hope I've convinced you of this concept of typology and parallelism in the Old Testament and the New Testament, especially with re regard to this very important figure who is Mother Mary. Again, many, many people don't give Mother Mary the respect that she deserves. And again, as I mentioned to you, we should fast more, we should pray more, we should learn and grow more in honoring Mother Mary because honoring Mother Mary honors Jesus Christ who was born of her. And of course, honoring Mother Mary, and again, this is the payoff point that I told you earlier, is actually honoring us, the church. Why? Why is that? Because, see, this passage in Revelation can not only be applicable to Mother Mary, the woman, right, in a more, in a literal sense. It, it is also seen by many, many of the church fathers as a symbol and as a representation of what our potential is as human beings who believe in Jesus Christ, because within us is the Spirit of God. Within us is the maturing understanding of how the Spirit moves. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's what the scriptures say. So we have a responsibility to bring God's life and God's purpose and his promise into the world. That could be with our spouse. That could be with our children. That could be with our school. That could be with our uh, boss. That could be in our job. It could be with our neighbors. We have the responsibility, regardless of COVID, regardless of injustice, regardless of problems and issues and difficulties like uh, being stuck at home, we have the opportunity, we have the responsibility to birth Christ from us. And if we don't, see what happens if the baby stays in the womb too long? It's not a pleasant thing. We begin to deteriorate. And of course, we our life begins to be in danger. And of course, the life of the child that is supposed to be born. Just like that, the gospel message is the child coming from us. And we have to nurture that. We have to train that. And we have to make sure that that becomes effective and mature in the society around us. So how can we do that? Well, again, it's very difficult in this season, but you know, there's so many people that are beginning to lose their jobs and have difficulties, suffering, not able to take care of their kids. Can we do something as simple as maybe, you know, a few of us, uh, maybe the brave few, go out, and maybe collect diapers at the curbside or collect food at the curbside of our members, right? And then that few people go and distribute that to a food bank or to the poor somehow, right? I'm just sharing one simple, silly example of something we did here a few weeks ago in Austin. You know, these kind of small, small things help us to continue to train and see us, see ourselves, give us that identity of Christians, give us that identity of people actually taking our faith seriously, and that, dear friends, will help us avoid anxieties and depressions and divorces and all the troubles associated with living in this time. We have to build that identity. We have to understand that we have Mother Mary as the model, but we are to grow into that model and become the Mother Mary of this generation for the people around us and for our children, for our parish, for all those who interact with us. So, 
Now, let me conclude uh, by just sharing with you that good news. Uh, again, giving me more honor, or excuse me, more awe and more respect for the season of fasting uh, concerning Mother Mary. Uh, so during the uh, canonical fasting, uh, coming to the Dormition uh, and Assumption of our uh, Mother, August 15th, that fast, uh, we went ahead and decided to dedicate our building project, because it's been delayed, as you know, for so long. Uh, we de decided to dedicate our building project to Mother Mary's intercession during that time. And of course, we've always been doing that under the banner and protection of our Apostle St. Thomas, who is the patron of our church. But we especially dedicated to Mother Mary, and guess what? The building permit was cleared. Praise the Lord. It still remained to be issued. So we were thinking during this Etnoimba season, even though we are not doing uh, Kurbana or we are not doing too many special prayers, in my mind, I was dedicating the time uh, to Mother Mary during this season of her birthday uh, so that everything could be finished. And by God's grace, last uh, uh, yesterday, excuse me, yesterday itself, yesterday itself, the final building permit was issued. So by God's grace, through the intercession of St. Mary and through the intercession of all the saints, especially St. Thomas, and your good graces and your prayers and your support, uh, especially in our church there in San Francisco, we finally have gotten everything ready so that we can begin the construction. Now, still challenges remain, and we thank you for your support, but I hope you can rejoice with us in this season, and again, profoundly uh, humbled and thanking you for your support toward our project. And again, of course, as always, you're most welcome. Anytime you're visiting Austin, you're most welcome uh, to join us uh, uh, as uh, best we can, especially in this COVID time. But this COVID time, of course, will uh, abate, uh, will be lifted. Uh, the, the restrictions will be lifted at some point. And of course, we welcome you to uh, come here and see what we are doing. And uh, you're, of course, you have that open invitation. Again, thanking you, uh, Sajjachin, for this time. May God bless you and keep you all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the living Holy Spirit, one true God. Amen. Thank you so much, Acha, for giving the precious evening and your word and Holy Spirit talk to you. It was great to listening to you. And through the intercession, I'm glad to hear that through the intercession and your dedication, you were able to clear your project that was pending for many, many months. So it is a good news. And also it is a testimony that you can tell to your generation that um, that is the miracle through the intercession of Mother Mary. Praise Lord's mercy come upon you and it was everything was clear. Thank you so much for the great word and the connection, especially in this time of depression and distress for the Mother Mary's intercession and how she was overcome that uh, in her time uh, to connect it with our day-to-day -day lives. I'm so grateful for, thank, uh, for your joining with us on uh, behalf of uh, each and every one of the family of St. Mary's. From the bottom of her, I'm expressing the gratitude and um, and uh, thanks to you. And uh, please keep us in your prayers. Papa, my and everybody's doing good. And thank you, thank you so much. And can you give us the final blessing? Yes, certainly. No, thank you so much, Acha. Again, thank you again for all always uh, having a kind welcome for us. So let us go ahead and uh, conclude with the final benediction. May the love of God the Father the grace of the only begotten Son, and the fellowship and descent of the living Holy Spirit be with you all, my brothers and sisters forever. Barakamor. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. And uh, Sunday evening, Paragrechen, on the Paragrechen, I would one of the messages on the live or on the Thank you. Thank you so much, once again. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.